Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of How I Got In. I'm your host Karina. Every week we seek to answer the most commonly asked question by potential college students and that is what do I need to do to get in? It's frustrating and everyone wonders and there's so many different universities with so many different expectations but we're going to help you answer that this week. This week we're talking to Stanford student Eric. Welcome Eric. Hey. So Eric, tell us a little, a little bit about yourself, um, what year you are, what your major is. Sounds good. Um, I'm going to be a rising senior, I am a rising senior, um, going to start in the fall. Uh, I'm a product design major, uh, which a lot of people don't really know what it is, but it's kind of a cross between business marketing, mechanical engineering, and even a little bit of art, um, industrial design, so it's a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoy it. That's cool. Do you have any minors? I do not have any minors. So what do you do with like a good degree with that? Um, really kind of whatever I you know want. <laughs> um, it kind of gives me like three different avenues to pursue. I could go down like a business management kind of design strategy route. Um, I could potentially pursue industrial design even more and you know go to design school and um, you know potentially go down that route or I could you know, do something totally different and maybe even, you know, develop software, things like that, so. No, it seems like a very diverse major to be in and definitely going to provide you with a lot of opportunities. Now let's, you know, give a little brief talk about Stanford. Now Stanford is home to the Stanford Prison Experiment. I remember studying in AP Psychology and the only way I remember to this was, oh, that Stanford thing on the exam, so. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Stanford. Yeah, uh, is like known for its research. Have you been able to partake in any research there? Um, I personally have not, um, but I would say 80% of my friends um, at Stanford do some sort of research on the side. Um, I went down a slightly different route and decided to work for um, which, what is essentially the uh, finance side of the student government, um, which is Stanford Student Enterprises. Um, so while some and most of my friends are actually doing research in different labs, um, I'm running the inventory for the Stanford Student Store, um, which is you know still pretty good um, experience, just in a slightly different setting. No, I mean any way you can get involved on campus is definitely the way. Like most people need to go, you get to meet people, you get experience, and you meet like different faculty at the university. Um, we'll talk more about the university towards the end of our interview, and let's kind of go but look back at what you did through high school. One of the key foundations to a competitive college applicant is what they did academic-wise and how much they challenged themselves. I know for me, I started taking AP classes my freshman year of high school, but you know, high schools always differ. How early did you start taking your AP classes? Um, so my high school was a little bit different. Um, they actually discouraged freshmen and sophomores from taking AP classes unless you know you had a really valid reason. Um, which was kind of interesting and kind of counterintuitive, I guess, in my opinion, because, you know, for those people who wanted to push themselves and things like that, we weren't really um, given that opportunity. So I actually didn't take my first AP class till junior year of high school. Um, yeah. What exam did you start taking? Uh, I would, took AP Spanish, I took AP as History, and took... Um, was the third one? Uh, AP Physics. AP Physics B. Do you think uh, there's more of an advantage to starting later in high school with AP classes? Um, I don't think there's necessarily an advantage. Um, start or taking AP classes was definitely kind of a slap in the face um, compared to regular classes. Just the skill level and the um, level of you know involvement in terms of how much more you have to study and like the difficulty of the material things like that was definitely eye-opening um, and I really liked it and given the opportunity I'm sure freshman year I would have you know tried to take those classes as well but I also don't know how well I would have adapt, adapted. You know I agree I mean for me like I just went into AP classes but I mean, like I've said in previous interviews, like, I don't think I knew what I was studying for. Like, I just kind of went, oh, I've been taking this class all year. I'll totally know what it is. But I think the key to being successful in any AP class, no matter what grade you're in, 
is to treat this exam like it's a final exam and prepare, prepare for it likewise. So a lot of students just go, oh, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. But like if you do pass it, I mean, I don't know about Stanford, but like I came out with a lot of college credit. Does Stanford accept college credit from AP classes? Um, I was told that they did not. Um, and I was taking classes more for interest in the first place. Um, so I wasn't super, I guess, motivated in, you know, scoring really high on the exam um, because the environment that we were given in, you know, my high school was, you know, try your best. Um, you know, if you pass, that's awesome. If you score higher than that, that's even better, and you can potentially use those units. Um, so I was told that Stanford did not take any units, um, which is absolutely false. Um, they take <laughs> level or scores of four and five. Um, and if I had known that uh, back in high school, I definitely would have, you know, tried much harder because coming into Stanford, I had to start at a lower level level math. Um, I had to start at a lower level, lower level physics and had to retake classes that I had already taken in high school. Um, which actually kind of set me behind um, most of the product design majors in the first place. Um, so I think that was mostly just a failure on my like school administration's part um, in just kind of creating the wrong environment or not being you know correctly educated about which class or which schools actually take which credits. I know I agree with that. I mean. I feel like, I mean, for me, like, I go to a state university, and if you're not coming in with college credit, like, you don't have as much leniency to change your major. Like, I know, I mean, freshmen come in, and you ask them, oh, what are you doing? And they say, oh, I'm pre-med, and you know, ask in your senior year, and they're most likely not pre-med. They're, you know, business or something else. Mm -hmm. So, like, freshmen change their mind a lot, and, I mean, for me, I know I had so much credit hours, and I had, like, so much flexibility. If I wanted to change my major, I completely could, and I wouldn't be behind. And I'm also having, you know, that flexibility, I was also able to add more minors and, you know, pursue other interests academic-wise. Yeah, at my, in my AP classes and at my high school, AP classes were more, um, it was more for if you just wanted to be around more motivated students, um, which I think is why, you know, we're at that kind of medium where, you know, just do your best, like, you know, it's better to get a worse grade in AP class than to take a regular level class and, you know, get an A um, and stuff like that. So it was unfortunate, but, you know, it worked out. <laughs> so. I don't know. I think, actually, I think that's actually a pretty good environment because it's not a lot of pressure on you. And I know it's like, you know, a high school student taking a lot of AP classes, it can be very stressful. They're very demanding classes, and you're freaking out. And then if you have your school on you to pass, and you're just like, it's a lot of pressure. And I think that your school saying, you know, challenge yourself. We'd rather see you challenge yourself than, you know, stress yourself out and, like, you know, not do as well. Um, now, in mm -hmm. regards to, you know, your junior year as well, did you start taking the SAT and, a and ACT your junior year? Yes, I believe so. It's a really long time ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I took the SAT and the ACT for the first time in, I want to say, like, January or February of my junior year. Um, yeah, and I took the ACT, I think, in May. And I took the ACT only once and took the SAT twice. Yes. All right, how did you prepare for those? Um, I was lucky enough to enroll in like a SAT prep course over one of the, over summer, um, and it was really um, only I think two weeks. Um, basically, just you know, learning vocab, taking practice tests. Um, retrospectively, it's nothing that I couldn't have done at home. Um, but they kind of create the environment where, you know, okay, we're all going to take practice SAT, like, it's going to be exactly how the real SAT is going to be. Um, so just kind of getting used to that kind of environment um, and being given and taught all these different tools and tips and tricks and things like that. Like, for instance, on certain sections, reading the answers from D to C to B to A um, might actually save you some time um, because in those sections, you know, they're trying to eat up time by having you read these long answers. 
Interesting. So yeah. that's, yeah. So, oh, sorry. And no, sorry. Um, did you take the SAT before you started prep, or did you do prep before you took the SAT for the first time? I took it once before and then once after. Oh, yeah, because I know I've heard several times where, like, there's always a different opinion on whether you should take the SAT, ACT before you start doing prep to see where you're at with it, or you just start right off mm -hmm. the bat with tutoring and then, and then take the exams, I think. Yeah, I think no matter how many times you take it, um, you will do better. So I think the more you, you know, take practice tests, the more vocab you learn, um, the better prepared you'll be just in general. Um, so I obviously opted for, you know, taking it first, then doing prep, then taking it again. Um, and compared to my friends who just took it multiple times, it wasn't like a huge increase. Um, it was more just a, you know, it was, I definitely increased my scores, but not to any extent that was like, wow, everyone should absolutely take a call at like a SAT prep course because I think I could have just done it you know, on my own. Saved a lot of money. Now, do you think, like, I know today there's a lot of um, programs coming out with online tutoring. Do you think that you would have mm -hmm. found that easier where it's kind of like you do it on your own time? You need, I mean, I feel like you have to have more determination to do it and go in with that. I know for me, like, for some parts, maybe not in the math aspect, I probably needed more, like, intensive um, tutoring for that. But on the English and, like, reading side of it, like, I could have easily gone online and done programs by myself and... I don't know if it would have helped my score at all, but I definitely would have been exposure to SAT, ACT prep in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, I am more of a believer in, you know, the old-fashioned way of studying doing SAT prep. So um, I would have, or I had a SAT prep booklet that I would, you know, work out of. Um, I think the one thing that online definitely would help with um, is vocab because there's so many SAT vocab like learning sites um, and they're all very good and very engaging. They're like online flashcards, stuff like that. Um, I think doing the reading and the math sections online, um, it's at the same level or you know, not as useful as if you had just done it out of a booklet. Yeah, interesting. Now uh, let's kind of shift away from more of the academic side and look at more of like, you know, what you did outside of school. and it's kind of an uh, important component to the college application because it can really distinguish you between um, applicant A and applicant B. So what did you do, like, you know, did you start getting involved your freshman year in high school? Did you do anything outside of school? Mm -hmm. um, so I think the key to extracurricular activities, like, in terms of getting into college is doing what you absolutely love and not necessarily doing things to put on your resume. Um, because that sort of stuff really comes through in your essays and any supplemental materials that you might be supplying to these colleges. Um, so I was really, really involved and really interested in politics um, when I was in high school. Um, I was involved in student government, um, you know, went to the district meet, district office meetings, things like that. Um, I was lucky enough to be on my congressman's like student advisory council. Um, you know, and through that we just planned a, a community service event. Um, I was in National Honor Society, so had a required number of community service hours every, you know, every quarter or semester. Um, and so I volunteered in a kindergarten classroom on Fridays um, after I got out of school kind of stuff. So, but I did all that because I actually really enjoyed it. You know, I wanted to be doing that stuff. It wasn't because, you know, I said, oh, college will like, really like this. Like, yeah, that's a great, like, you know, consequence of these, like, organizations and stuff. But, like, I was able to communicate this through my application, which is why I think ultimately, you know, I was given an acceptance letter. I agree. I think a common belief that a lot of high school students think is that I need to have a resume with 500 different activities and 500 different outside activities I'm doing outside of school, and it's like you can't can't spread yourself too thin. You want to, you know, show your passion about something, and that even carries through college. You know, you want to, you know, have that more of an academic focused organization, but you also want to do something that you love and you know something you su succeed through. And it's yeah, also definitely. important as you say, like, where 
Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, like, yeah, it's good to have, you know, to be in a member of 15 different clubs in high school, but I what was what's more appealing is, you know, having one club on your resume and having, you know, three or four lines of, I did this, this, and this, you know, and we helped this organization or this, you know, group of people, and, you know, it really, like, re was really rewarding to me for these reasons kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I think. Because that's what yeah. they want to see. They want to see some sort of depth. Yeah, no, you kind of nailed on the head there with the student government. You, it seems like you got really involved with that, and one of the key aspects is showing a leadership quality within the extracurricular that you're in. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a lot of students will just go, oh, I'm in this club, and they have no leadership experience at all in that. You know, if you're looking at one guy, and they, he doesn't have any leadership experience, but he's in 10 different clubs, and they're looking at you with leadership experience, it's so much more appealing to look at you with, who's leading other students in the actions that you're doing and impacting mm -hmm. the community as well at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, shifting away from you know the extracurriculars and going more towards a college application process, you're going into your senior year, and you always—I mean, for me, like I always thought about applying to colleges. Like I was, you know, touring colleges sophomore year of high school. When you're mm -hmm. beginning to, when you're looking at the colleges that you're about to apply to, what was it that you were looking for? Um, that's actually a great question, and. And I don't really know how to answer that. Um, I visited quite a bit of schools. Um, me and my family, we traveled to Boston on or during junior year, I think during spring break or something. Um, and I guess, you know, when you're on campus, you kind of just get the sort of vibe by, you know, how people are interacting and things like that. And I think that was one of the main factors that I was looking at, um, you know, just how do people carry themselves, um, you know, at this university? Um, what sort of research opportunities or what sort of extracurricular opportunities do they have that are unique to their school? Um, I know for me, like, I was looking pretty seriously at Northeastern, um, which is in Boston, and uh, they have a really interesting program where you work um, and also go to school at the same time, um, and you're working in your field. So it's simultaneously, you know, learning in the field and also, you know, gaining actual academic knowledge. Um, and that's, you know, a program that's pretty, I think, pretty unique to Northeastern. And so and anything actually, like that that you can identify. I consider that for a while, but then I decided that I've lived in Florida my whole life and me and cold weather, we don't go along really well. <laughs> so I think... Yeah, that's I mean, that was also a factor. Cold. Yeah. Are you originally from California? Yeah, I actually grew up in San Jose, California, which is about 25 minutes south of Stanford. Okay, so. all right. Now, going through the application process, specifically for Stanford, um, do they like do they have like essays that you answer? Do they do an interview? Yeah, so they're through Common App. Um, I do not believe that they do an interview. Uh, you know, we all hear rumors of people who did interviews for the application, but I don't think that. You know, it's an actual part of the application. Um, you so you submit your regular Common App essay through Common App. They read that, and then there's I would say five or six short answer questions, which are 250 words or less. Um, and those are more fun questions, like you know, what historical event would you want to witness? Um, Who is a historical character that you would want to have conversation with? Um, you know. Tell me about or tell us about a source of academic academic vitality. Like, what are you really interested in academically? Um, what's something that you find super engaging? Things like that. Yeah, I face similar essay questions, and I think the key component with that and being successful with those kind of essays is not is ma making sure you're not thinking, oh, what's the university want me to say. And instead, focusing on something that you're more passionate about, something that you're really interested in, because this is a represent, representation of who you are, not what the university wants you to be. Exactly, um, and I definitely struggled with that aspect of the, you know, of the application. Um, I changed my answers so many different times to those questions, specifically because of that reason. You know, trying to, trying to find the right kind of thing to write about. Um, so. Like for instance, you know, if I to witness a historical event, I said I wanted to witness or be at the 1980 
Olympic hockey game between Russia and the U.S. Um, you know, because I played hockey throughout my entire childhood, and like that's something that was super interesting, and I would love to be there, kind of thing. Um, you know, whereas you know some people would say you know, signing of the Declaration of Independence, or you know, which is a valid answer if you're actually very interested in that. No, I think your answer was. I mean, that's going to get an admissions counselor to say, "Oh, well, why does he want to see that game?" Like that answers, you know, it gets interest into what you have to say, and I think. It's a great way to get attention to your application. Now, you yeah, know, absolutely. I don't know when Stanford releases their um, their decision, but like, you know, when it comes to that, like, I know with so many of my decisions, I was like so nervous. Like, and like, my first one was a rolling decision base, and I was beyond excited about that. The second one came in, and then the first rejection always stings, and then you get more acceptances. And how did you feel when you got that Stanford acceptance? Um, honestly, I thought someone was playing a joke on me. <laughs> um, it was um, kind of just a <laughs> unbelievable kind of thing. Um, I remember I was at a golf match um, for my high school, and my friend who also applied to Stanford said, you know, he called me during the golf match and said he didn't get in. But, you know, me, let's see how long ago was that? That was four years ago. I did not have a smartphone, so I couldn't check my email on my phone. So uh, I remember just going home and staring at my email on my laptop for a good five minutes before actually clicking the link. So, and then <laughs> as soon as I opened it, I, I, was, I was shocked. I was like, I couldn't speak. I don't know. It was a, it was a huge opportunity and a dream come true and something that I never really did. Yeah, when I uh, got my acceptance, I didn't believe it. I kept checking the um, the letter to make sure that I actually had it in my physical, you know, possession. That I'm like, okay, I actually have this. This is right. This isn't wrong. Like, this isn't some prank. And I think my mom actually cried. <laughs> um, but you know, everyone, it's just it's surreal. Like, you work so hard throughout high school, and it's finally there. Like, you finally did it. Like, you're going to college, yeah, and like, it's a huge relief. Looking back at the whole, you know, throughout you know your journey through high school and throughout the college application process, is there anything that you regret doing or something you wish you changed? Um, absolutely not. Um, I wish I had started the college process maybe you know three months earlier. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted, and I devoted a lot of time to actually applying to West Point Military Academy in New York. Um, and that took away from a lot of my applications, I think, um, for other schools. But I don't regret do going through that process at all. Um, and in terms of you know, any extracurriculars or academic you know, changes that I would make, I, I wouldn't at all. Um, because I, at the time, I did what I was really, truly interested in, um, you know, which was education, politics, um, public service, that sort of stuff. And um, I did it because I loved it, not for any other reason. No, I mean, that's definitely the way to go. Um, you know, as college students, I mean, hopefully some of our viewers will go and visit Stanford. As they're going to visit Stanford, is there any one place that they should go eat or should they go visit? Um, well, on campus, you should definitely go to Treehouse, um, which is right located in Chester Union, and it's like our main, I guess, it's like the go-to place. You know, if we don't have dinner at the, um, you know, at the dorms or whatever, then that's the first place that everyone will usually go. Um, it's a lot of like, you know, just good burgers and burritos and sports bar kind of deal. Cool. Well, Eric, thank you for your time. It was great talking to you and hearing what you had to say. No problem. Thank you so much. And for everyone, we hope you tune and in. Good luck to all the... <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> good luck to all the high schoolers. Um, it's a rough time, but... You guys will get through it, and it's going to be awesome no matter where you end up. All right, and to our viewers, we hope you tune into our next episode.